Okay, everyone. So please welcome Fridolin, who's going to tell us about uh, TOT, the recommendation, recommendation engine for Python. Okay, so hello, everyone. Welcome to this presentation about Project TOT, about recommendation engine for Python applications. Before I start, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Fridolin. I work at Red Hat. I'm not first time speaker here, so you probably see me like two years back. I, t I uh, had a talk about Project Selenon. Uh, right now I work on Project TOT. I'm one of the developers of TOT, and uh, I would like to introduce that project to you. So what is TOT and why TOT? You probably know the PyPI, the Python Package Index, that's index that hosts uh, open source projects. And when I wrote these slides, uh, I found out that there is something like 200,000 projects available out there, free to use. And there are about 1.6 million releases. Uh, that's quite a huge number, I would say. And this number grows each and every day, especially with popularity that uh, Python ecosystem uh, has. So. Let's try to use some packages. So let's create some artificial example and use some packages that are hosted on PyPI. So let's say we would like to use TensorFlow, a machine learning library, and also Flask. So we install these dependencies using, for example, pip, and we write our application uh, that uses these two libraries. OK. But if you take a look at this scenario, it's not just your application with these two libraries. Uh, by installing these libraries, you also introduce most of the time transitive dependencies, and uh, you use some Python interpreter that uses these uh, packages. Uh, this Python interpreter then runs inside some operating system that provides some uh, packages, such as glibc, uh, that is, uh, in our case, used uh, by TensorFlow. And then there is that kernel space uh, where operating system runs and provides some kernel modules. And this all runs on some hardware. You can imagine that if you have any issue in any layer of this stack, then your application simply misbehaves or pro provides wrong outputs or simply doesn't even run or doesn't even start. So let's take a look at uh, this layer. Let's take a look at direct dependencies and transitive dependencies. Uh, when, I were, when I was uh, writing these slides, I took a look about uh, at, at uh, packages, uh, and I found out that there are 33 releases of Flask. And when you do pip install Flask, you introduce five additional packages, such as Click, It's Dangerous, Jinja, and so on. These all are uh, also released in different versions. And now let's suppose that we uh, find all the versions of these libraries, and we would like to know how many combinations are there to install Flask with its uh, dependencies. And I got this huge number. This is estimation. Uh, so the actual number will vary uh, based on actual resolution, but you see that there is like, something like 50 million possibilities how you can install a Flask, Flask application with different versions of, of uh, its dependencies. I did the same for TensorFlow, and at the time I was writing these slides, there were 85 releases of TensorFlow, and TensorFlow is much bigger project than Flask, and it introduces something like 30 uh, additional packages. When I did uh, estimation of, on how many combinations are there to install a TensorFlow uh, stack, I got this huge number. So it was something like 10 to the power of 20. If we take a look at uh, some AI uh, approaches that are uh, today, you probably know AlphaGo, uh, the famous Go AI that beats every Go player. And it uses uh, machine learning to, to find best possible move uh, in, in a game. And AlphaGo, or, or Go uh, game, in general has something like 10 to the power of 172 combinations, how you can place uh, things on, on board. So it's much bigger, uh, much bigger number uh, compared to other number. But in Project Tot, we took uh, similar approaches the, as, as AlphaGo, 
and we are trying to uh, trying to solve uh, developers' uh, issues with stacks. So this was this layer. So we had something like 10 to the power of 20 number of combinations, but there is mu there is much more layers. So if we take a look at uh, the software layer. Uh, there are different uh, Python interpreters in different versions that you can install. Then there are different operating systems in different versions that you can install. Uh, then you have packages uh, available on PyPI, such as Flask or TensorFlow. Or you can host your own packages uh, on your own uh, index. And we do so in our team. Uh, we optimize TensorFlow by switching uh, different compiler flags. And we provide a community index uh, that hosts uh, TensorFlow releases uh, free to use. So if you use TensorFlow, you can use these releases and gain some performance. Okay, so now the question is, uh, what should I use uh, out of these uh, options that I have? Now, uh, let's simplify our, our use case. And let's say that we have uh, some two libraries. One is called simplelib and the other one is another lib. So it's similar case as uh, Flask and TensorFlow, but in this case, simplelib will not introduce any transitive dependencies to our stack, and another lib will not introduce any, any additional libraries to our stack. In other words, we install just these two libraries when we uh, run our Python application. Now we would like to find some function that describes how good our software stack is. So uh, we would like to install simplelib and another lib in different versions and evaluate how good the given software stack is. We can do so and uh, we can create such function and we install different versions of simplelib, different versions of another lib, and then we have some overall score uh, this function is discrete, so we have uh, discrete values, and let's try to interpolate these values. What we get, we get a surface, and uh, we see that in some cases our application uh, is scored better, in some cases uh, worse. Uh, what this score can mean, it can mean, what, mean whatever you can think of. It can be, for example, number of vulnerabilities present in your software. It can be also performance of your machine learning model. Um, but it can be also a combination of these two or any other uh, metric you uh, could think about. Uh, what we are looking for, we are looking for these spikes, like values that have a very high, high score. And uh, we assume that uh, the scoring function returns higher values for software uh, that is uh, good for our use case. So uh, that's what we are looking for. And that's basically TOT. Uh, in TOT, we aggregate some knowledge about uh, packages, such as uh, if the application builds correctly, if uh, it runs correctly, if it runs correctly on different Python versions in different operating systems. Uh, if it behaves correctly, uh, what's the overall performance? And then uh, there is written an, a resolver that takes into account these, uh, these observations and can resolve software stacks that are high performing. So if you remember that uh, slide with uh, function, uh, these uh, spikes uh, in the wall uh, state space. So we say that our that, uh, latest versions are not always uh, greatest choices, and uh, that's basically the idea behind TOT. Uh, TOT is a bigger project. It runs in OpenShift. There are components uh, and different integration points, but the most interesting component for this slide, uh, for this talk, uh, is uh, Advisor. That's a component uh, inside TOT and it's basically the implementation of Python resolver. So uh, TOT is a ser service uh, that provides endpoints that you can consume data from, and it's pure server-side resolution. Uh, we had multiple uh, iterations on the implementation. The very first implementation was pure Python implementation, and uh, it loaded the wall dependency graph into memory, and then we had representation of these packages that was basically an array graph, and we did transactional operations. So we said, these, remove these three packages from dependency graph, and that transaction either proceeded or not. Uh, 
It was also possible to score uh, these packages and uh, dependency graph was adjusted in a way that uh, resolution led to, uh, to higher performing uh, stacks sooner. Uh, this implementation was, however, memory quite hungry, so the main issue was memory consumption. And as you know, uh, objects in Python carry some additional uh, metadata, such as reference counts. And uh, for example, for a TensorFlow stack, we required something like 32 gigabytes just to resolve uh, a software stack. Uh, so we abandoned this uh, solution and we rewritten the whole part into, like the core part into C, C++. So we designed a protocol uh, that effectively serialized the whole dependency graph and we were able to uh, keep notes of dependency graph in something like 24 bytes and uh, we gained also uh, memory consumption improvements. However, we reached another bottleneck and then was a number of queries that were hit to, uh, to our knowledge base or, or to the, our database just to obtain the dependency graph. So uh, there were something like two and a half thousand queries to, to our database just to obtain uh, TensorFlow's dependency graph. And then there were subsequent queries uh, to score the dependency graph and that required a lot of pressure on, on databases, so we changed the uh, database two times. So right now we run thirds database, and uh, later on we also decided to abandon this uh, solution uh, because of these queries. That's quite a huge number. So we looked for some solutions that we could apply from theoretical informatics, and we did operations research. So we implemented different types of, of uh, resolving, uh, for example, hill climbing or simulated annealing. And this rethinking of the wall resolver led into split the wall resolver into two parts. One was resolver that can lazily uh, resolve software stack based on, based on Python uh, ecosystem specification. And then there is predictor that guides uh, this resolver uh, on which packages uh, in which versions should be resolved in order to come up with some uh, software stack. Uh, this uh, implementation worked for us, but if you think about it, um, uh, we were basically randomly sampling this whole state space of uh, software stacks that can be resolved. So we randomly picked some, uh, scored it, and evaluated the score. Uh, that's not nice, uh, so we try to find another solution. Uh, we know that there is this function that describes packages, but what about finding gradients? So if we are able to find a gradient of this function, then the gradient can lead us to these spikes, and we can find higher score uh, scored uh, software stacks much faster. And that was basically the next approach we took. Uh, so uh, the most interesting uh, paper that we evaluated was Neural Combinatorial Optimization with Reinforcement Learning, uh, published by Google Brain. And we really tried to learn that uh, gradient. Uh, unfortunately, um, you, if you think about taught as a service that should be responsible to users. Uh, you don't want to learn some, some gradients and you don't want to spend time on learning uh, some neural network uh, and, and provide inputs to neural network. So you don't want to spend two hours to learn, uh, to learn neural network and another 30 minutes to, to query your database. So we also abandoned this solution and uh, right now we use gradient-free methods uh, so we implemented temporal difference and Monte Carlo tree search, uh, where Monte Carlo tree search uh, looks the most promising uh, way how to resolve uh, graphs. So how does it work? We basically uh, try to uh, sample that, that uh, state space, that function of all possible, uh, possible uh, resolved software stacks, and we learn policy how to how to find the best uh, software stack based on uh, predictor and based on scoring mechanism uh, in the resolver. The resolver itself is a reconfiguration pipeline, so uh, you can write uh, different pipeline units. I think there are five pipeline units in total, 
And these pipeline units are dynamically cons constructed on each request, and uh, they score uh, actual resolver steps. So uh, this way we can, for example, uh, plug a new pipeline unit if you are using convolutional neural network, uh, that is, uh, we can plug a pipeline unit that is specified just to score uh, convolutional neural uh, network layers. Um, then a special component uh, in our deployment is called dependency monkey. And this component uh, is able to gather observations for us, such as if the application runs correctly, uh, if uh, it behaves correctly, what is the performance. And this dependency monkey can sample that uh, state space of all the possible uh, uh, stacks and uh, resolve software stacks that we don't have any observations about and submit them to, to our service that evaluates how uh, good the given software stack is. So this is how we... Uh, ...advisor in our uh, stage environment. So uh, we have Todd deployed at Red Hat, and I asked to resolve uh, TensorFlow stack. Um, TensorFlow stack together with Flask. Uh, if, you, if you can see, the whole resolution took something like eight seconds. Uh, I asked to resolve latest software stack. When I asked to resolve the best possible software stack, the resolution uh, took something like 2.7 minutes, so almost three minutes. And we were able to score a half million of, of uh, software stacks. If you compare it to uh, PPEN, uh, the packaging, uh, tool that is recommended by PyPA. Uh, when I tried to install TensorFlow and Flask and ask to resolve its latest version, uh, the resolution took something like one minute. And I had turned on pip cache, so, uh, so it, it was using cached artifacts from PyPA. So uh, we are really benefiting of that offline resolution that we have inside our, our resolver where we uh, do not contact directly by PA, but we have pre-computed data and we can resolve software stacks uh, uh, quite fast. There are also other parts of Todd that I haven't spoke about. For example, we use bots to automate uh, uh, updates of dependencies, new releases of bots components, of, of uh, Todd's components. Uh, you can find also our uh, TensorFlow index that hosts these uh, TensorFlow uh, artifacts that are optimized for performance. And uh, we have integration with uh, different tools uh, such as OpenShift or Jupyter Notebooks. So if you are a uh, data scientist and you use Jupyter Notebooks, you can enable our extension to Jupyter Notebooks and it will talk to Todd and Todd will resolve uh, software stacks for you. Then there is command line interface that is similar to pip or pipenv. Uh, if you have a GitHub uh, repository and you use uh, Python applications, uh, we soon uh, will release a developer, developer preview for uh, uh, our application that is called Kebehet. And you can install it, you can enable it for your repository, and your dependencies will be automatically managed by uh, TOT. So if you want to give TOT a try, feel free to install uh, this application, and we can make TOT better. So uh, it's a community project. Uh, you can find information about TOT on these sites. We have Twitter, so feel free to follow us on uh, TOT Station. Uh, Twitter handle. Uh, we are open source, so you can find us on GitHub under Todd Station Organization. And if you are interested in bot, uh, there is a link uh, to bot. And if you have any feedback for a bot, uh, you can submit it to our uh, feedback form. So this way, I would like to thank you, and that's it. We have plenty of time for questions. Unless. So the question was whether uh, this is just for PyPI 
or if uh, this solution will work also for your local packages. Uh, in total, uh, we can register a Python index uh, if it follows a PEP specification of, of Python index. And if it is publicly hosted, we, we are able to analyze these packages and uh, resolve uh, and use them to, for resolver. So. Uh, when computing the number of possible uh, configuration, did you take into account the actual version requirements, or it was just based on the name of each package? Uh, sorry, uh, can, can you repeat? No. Is that better now? So when computing the, the number of possible um, configuration, did you take into account the actual version requirements, or it was just based on the name of each package? Uh, it was based on actual version specification, uh, so uh, some packages were really discarded, like older versions were really discarded by, by uh, these combinations. Um, how trustworthy is the, the output uh, of Todd? Say it tells you that uh, the best uh, score for your software stack uh, is using uh, a pretty old, old version of a uh, simple lib or another lib, uh, and you may uh, be missing some features that you need, uh, but Todd is telling you that your software stack is going to have a better score. So how do you handle that? Uh, so if you use some features of, of libraries uh, that are released like in recent versions, uh, it should be stated in your requirements file or in your uh, pip file. Uh, because you really rely on that uh, newer version uh, that has these features. Uh, can we expect this to come to other languages as well, uh, like Golang or C? Uh, so right now we are focused on Python. Maybe follow us on Twitter. We will post updates. So yes. <laughs> if I have a very custom score function, I can provide it and you recompute it for all the package I need. And I mean, it, so it sounds very uh, expensive in terms of. Uh, recomputing of what? If I have a custom score function, can I provide my own score function or, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, you can, so there are these pipeline units that you can implement and uh, in that case, you can basically create your, your, your pipeline unit and say, uh, this is score that I would like to expect and then the pipeline unit is, is plugged to, to resolver. Well, thank you for doing. Okay, thank you very much.